That is my crazy family. <laughs> and that is my son, Evan. This kid has taught me so much about courage. On November 29th, 2010, I got a call from his teacher. She said, Ann, Evan's kicked a hole in the sheetrock. He's taken out an electrical cord. He's tried to strangle himself. He's threatened to kill four students. He's dislocated a teacher's fingers. And if you can't be here in the next 10 minutes, we have to call the police. He was seven years old. It's amazing how a single phone call can change your entire life in an instant. My husband and I raced to school, picked Evan up, drove three excruciating hours from Austin to Dallas, and checked him into the pediatric psych unit of Children's Medical Center. We spent the next two months living at the Ronald McDonald House while he underwent treatment. Evan is an incredible kid. He's smart and he's funny. He's amazing. He's also severely mentally ill. He's been given a handful of diagnoses and labels, but it boils down to extreme oppositionality and defiance and impulsivity and aggression. Basically, you say up, he says down. You say right, he says left. You say take a bath, and he says, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Raising a child with mental illness is enough to make you crazy. <laughs> there are daily tantrums and meltdowns and blow-ups, and that's just me. Um, I was exhausted. I doubted myself. I saw versions of myself that I really didn't like, and I was afraid. I did a lot of soul searching in that Ronald McDonald room, and I realized that I had been blaming Evan for holding me back. After all, how can I live the life of my dreams when I have this at home? But what I started to realize is that it wasn't Evan holding me back. It was me. I wasn't a victim, I was a volunteer, and something had to change. When we discharged Evan from the hospital, I took a leap of faith. I decided to start my own business. It's something I had always wanted to do, but I was afraid. What if I couldn't build a website, or how could I invoice clients, or how could I find clients for that matter? But I figured that if I can do this, I can do anything. Why do we wait until we are desperate to make a change in our lives? We get stuck in our jobs, our relationships, our routines, and we convince ourselves that it's as good as it's gonna get. We stop dreaming about what we want and we settle for what we think we can get instead. Well, I'm on a mission to change that. I'm here to dare you to find your courage. So first, let's take a look at some real examples of courage. Then we'll talk about how we lose it, and most importantly, how we can get it back. So let's take a look at real courage. Rosa Parks, the epitome of courage. This woman made a statement not by taking a stand, but by taking a seat. Nick Vujicic inspires millions of people around the world, has overcome physical challenges and ob obstacles that most of us could never even dream of. And he's done it without any arms or legs. Malala Yousafzai, at 17, is the youngest person to ever win the Nobel Peace Prize. She fights for a woman's right to be able to get an education. And she continues to fight even after being shot in the face by the Taliban. Now, these are all extraordinary examples, but you don't have to look that far. My mom was a court reporter for 30 years. She didn't love it, but it was safe, it was comfortable. At the age of 51, she decided she was going to take a leap, and she did something she had always wanted to do. She became a flight attendant at Southwest <laughs> Airlines. At 66, she's still loving every minute of it. She's one flight attendant of the month, and she's the one who makes those hilarious announcements. My favorite being, in case of a loss of cabin pressure, please put your oxygen mask on first and then assist your child. And if you have more than one child, she'll suggest you pick your favorite or the one with the most potential. <laughs> Courage can take a lot of different shapes and sizes. So now that we know what it looks like, let's talk about where it goes, because when we're younger, we're full of courage. We think we can do anything. We think we know everything. Just ask my 13-year-old. <laughs> but somewhere along the line, we're challenged, and it gets lost, or at least misplaced. Now, I want to tell you a story about a science experiment to help illustrate this. So scientists took a pike, a northern pike. It's a carnivorous fish. 
and they placed it in a fish tank full of minnows. Now, as expected, the pike ate all of the minnows. So the scientists then put in another group of minnows, only this time they surrounded them in a glass cylinder so the pike could see the fish, but it couldn't get to them. And in an attempt to try, it continued to ram its head against the glass over and over and over again until finally it gave up and it sat on the bottom of the tank. Scientists then removed the glass cylinder so that the minnows could swim freely all around the tank. Can you guess what happened next? The pike didn't even try. It had already convinced itself that it wasn't able to do it, and it sat on the bottom of the tank and starved to death. This has become known as the pike syndrome. Now, while it might not be a glass cylinder, we're all victims of the pike syndrome. We let our self-limiting thoughts and these lines and barriers that we've cre created around ourselves, and we tell ourselves we can't break through. Now understand, we're wired to stay stuck. We're wired to resist change. Our brain will take anything we repeatedly do and turn it into a habit. And it's easier that way. You don't have to work as hard. The problem is, if we're not careful, we'll get stuck in a rut. And a rut is just a grave with no ends. So what do we do about it? How do we find it? How do we get our courage back? Well, let's start with this. I want everyone to raise your right arm up in the air. Okay. Now I want you to imagine there's a giant clock on the ceiling and you're going to trace the circle with your index finger going clockwise. So you're going to trace a circle to the right. There you go. Now while you're doing that, I want you to lower your arm down to just below your chest. Now what direction is your clock going? Counterclockwise. How's that possible? I'm not a wizard. <laughs> there's always people in the back, I don't get it. The direction didn't change. Your perspective did. And sometimes finding your courage is a matter of shifting your perspective. It all starts with the way you see yourself. What do you see when you look in the mirror? <laughs> it is impossible to act and behave in a way that is inconsistent with the way you see yourself. And the way we think and the way we act, it shapes the way we see the world. So when you think about the thoughts that keep you stuck, what are they? I know it's easy to come up with them. I wish I were taller and thinner, or I shouldn't have had that third Krispy Kreme donut. But they're not serving us. Evan and I talk a lot about taking a negative thought and replacing it with a better thought. And we were in the car this week, and I said, man, I am nervous about this TED Talk. And Evan looked at me, and he said, no, Mom, you're excited about this TED Talk. <laughs> A few minutes later, I was attempting to parallel park, and I wasn't doing a very good job. And I didn't even realize it, but under my breath, I said, I suck at parallel parking. And Evan looked at me, and he said, no, Mom, you're excited about parallel parking. <laughs> Smart ass. Yeah. Here's the funny thing about our thoughts, though. We find what we look for. When we believe something, we look for all of the evidence to support it. I can prove it to you. How many of you have ever dated someone where at the beginning of the relationship, everything they did was adorable. The way they walked was cute, the way they talked was cute, the way they told stories was so cute, until you figured out they weren't the one. And then everything they did started to drive you crazy. Even the smallest things make you nuts. Hell, watching them eat makes you nauseous. And it's because you have started looking for all of the reasons they're not the one. And we find what we look for. If you let your Thoughts hold you back, they will. If you look for the reasons you can't do something, you will find them. And if you let fear stand in your way, it will. It all starts with how you see yourself and the messages you send yourself. So I'm going to give you three things that you can do to find your courage. First, I want you to identify a negative thought that is standing in your way and replace it with a better thought. For me, I thought, oh, this isn't fair, woe is me, a pity party every day. And while those things may have been true, they certainly weren't serving me. So I came up with a replacement phrase. It is what it is. It's not the ideal situation, but there's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it, so it is what it is. And I put that statement everywhere. I've got it on my bracelet, I've got it on my refrigerator, my nightstand, my car visor, anywhere I spend a lot of time like the wine aisle. <laughs> Two, 
I want you to give yourself permission to dream big. What is it you really want for your life? And I want you to focus on the what, not the how. For some reason, when we don't know how we're going to accomplish ourselves, we tell ourselves it would just be easier to settle than try and fail. What is it you really want? And third, I want you to take action. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Don't wait to be inspired. Do something today to get you closer toward your dream. It doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be, something big. It could be speaking up when it would be easier to stay silent. It could be taking a friend to dinner tonight rather than watching Law & Order reruns. <laughs> something small. And then rinse and repeat. It adds up. In February of last year, Evan was discharged from his second two-month hospitalization. And just to keep things interesting, I was diagnosed with a tumor in my salivary gland. Now, the doctors thought it was a small tumor, relatively routine surgery, but it turned out to be the size of a small avocado, and it left my face completely paralyzed on the right-hand side. That's me. I couldn't close my eye. I couldn't shut my mouth. I had a speech impediment. And because I couldn't close my eye, two days later, I scratched my cornea. Excruciating. The doctor said, Ann, we have to put a gold weight into the top of your eyelid. We have to stitch up the bottom eyelid so that we can protect your eye. And we have to do that before you go through six weeks of radiation. So my husband and I decided, you know, since we'd been so lucky lately, <laughs> we were going to celebrate my birthday in Las Vegas before the surgery. So we're walking down the stairs toward Caesar's Palace, and I just, I have this sense of calm come over me, and I say, honey, this is the best I have felt since the surgery. I finally feel human as I fell down the stairs and broke my foot in four places. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. <laughs> I wanted to curl up in a ball. I wanted to hibernate. I wanted to give up. But I put my big girl pants on, and I fought like hell. I made it through radiation. I continued to work. I published my first book. And lo and behold, my face started to come back. Evan is 12 years old now. And I'm not going to lie to you. Some days are better than others. One thing is for sure, every day is an adventure. When you go home today, I want you to do three simple things. First, I want you to identify a thought standing in your way and replace it with a better thought. Second, allow yourself to dream big. What is it you really want? And third, take action. This is a journey. You're going to take two steps forward and one step back. But whatever you do, don't give up. One of my favorite quotes in the entire world is from Marianne Radmacher. She says, courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I'll try again tomorrow. If this journey has taught me anything, it's to redefine courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage means being a badass despite it. Thank you.